and very grateful to have Christina Carillo Booker. I'm also known as Fully Rock Christina. And I would say that you're probably the most recognisable raw vegan maybe in, maybe in the world, I don't know, but you're definitely one of the best known. And for the last 10 years or so, you've been promoting this lifestyle on YouTube, kind of a pioneer in social media, promoting uh, the raw vegan lifestyle to probably millions of people around the world. And you've got a fantastic book, The Fully Raw Diet, I believe is the correct title. And you're also um, coming to the UK festival again last year, you were there last year. And what else is going on in your life? <laughs> what else Sorry, is I was doing the UK Fruit Fest dance, right? Yeah, right. And apologize if you hear background noise. Um, <laughs> there's company at my house and I tried to tell them that this is not happening, but like Lebanese people don't listen, right? So you can't like, you just we're gonna all have to deal with it today. <laughs> um, so let's see. Oh my gosh. By the way, I just want to say I had the best time at the UK Fruit Fest. Um, many people know that I, I don't attend the Woodstock Fest anymore and I had some really hard experiences and I was, you know, I I came to the UK Fruit Fest and I was so wildly surprised with, at how much fun I had and just <laughs> genuine, authentic people there and how wonderful it was for me. It was such a great experience and it's the only festival that I'm returning to this coming year. So I love you, Ronnie. Thank you. Yeah, I'm really. I mean, I'm. I'm really happy about that. I'm glad that we. Um, I was really amazed when you said that to me that you, you know, that you'd enjoyed it so much and uh, that it'd been a bit of a better experience for you than other events had been and things like that. I mean, uh, is that as well to do with you or have you changed or do you approach these things differently now or i don't know i mean maybe you know what it is i think i just felt safe i felt really <laughs> safe this time um because before it was like i don't know i'd be walking around at other festivals and i always felt like either people were judging me or mm. they were just waiting to find one thing about me to use it to tear me apart and mm. use it in a different way and I didn't have that energy at all at the UK Fruit Fest. It was nice. I could just be myself. I could just dance and laugh with people and hug people. And, and I really value that because, I mean, nobody ever likes to feel like they're in, a, they're in a space where, number one, they don't feel safe or, or somebody has, like, ulterior, ulterior agenda around them. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. um, oh, my gosh. I, and I just love the, the group of people that you brought together right? Like all super conscious. They understand the message. They know, you know, the raw food message as well. And it's just like, you just get to, to be that around people. And it, it was so meaningful for me. So maybe I have changed. Maybe I'm stronger. <laughs> maybe I'm more mature. Um, also, I just want to say normally I don't have makeup on, <laughs> but I had a photo shoot this morning for a vegan makeup company. And I, I went straight from that shoot to here. And so like, I'm all doled up with their Valentine's Day. <laughs> So, for anybody who's wondering, like, I look like a raccoon right now, that would probably be why. Yeah. I usually do wear makeup, but I just forgot yeah. to put mine on. You have so many photo shoots, Ronnie, you know? I mean, it's just... <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, anyway, that's, that's, I think, maybe it's me who's changed. I've definitely gotten a lot stronger over the years. I feel like I used to be so, uh, I don't want to say weak. I'm still pretty sensitive, but I definitely have... Uh, gotten a lot of discernment in how to handle situations like that and I, I like have a better radar on, on when to know that you know or maybe that but, just comes with like growing up I don't know I guess the problem with your success and with you being kind of a, a person if, if someone thinks about the raw vegan diet or even the vegan diet you're one of the, the people that, that people automatically think of and you become the person that gets attacked if people want to find someone to try and um, oh my gosh did you see the other day there was this one woman she did a youtube video and analyzing my diet on in on youtube i don't even remember what her channel yeah i watched was. i watched a little bit but yeah she's not even vegan and she basically just made a video to slam me and she knew it was going to get her views because she used my name in her title she had my photo on her thumb which obviously is clickbait and the entire time, all she did was slam me. And it was like, 
all she does is sell products. Oh, this raw food is so expensive and it's unrealistic. And she goes, oh, an eye roll, Christina. These yeah. products, she goes, just the product. What, what did she say? She goes, eye roll. The quantity and volumes is just disgusting to me. I'm like, girlfriend, it's a, it's a 32 ounce jar of juice. I'm like, portion <laughs> sizes my rear end. Like, really? Like, let's make something dramatic about it. You know, it's just things like that. It just sets me off the edge because I'm like, number one, she's not even a vegan. Number two, not an ounce of integrity in that video. It was made just to get her more views. And number three, I commented on her video and she deleted it. And I, I you know, I, I just kindly said, hey, blessings to you. But it's very clear that you made this video just to slam me and to get more views. And, um, you know, it's... Uh, when I see stuff like that now, like I just have this radar within me as of recent where I just want to be around people who have integrity and authenticity. And there's just so much on the internet right now that is done without those things, without authenticity, without integrity. And I have just dedicated my, my current focus to just be that for people because I think that's what we all need. And there's so many people right now who are online and who live a life that's not even true, right? And I um, I really value people who have honesty and this just, in, you know, just this realness about them. And um, am I even making sense right now? Am I making sense, Ronnie? Yeah, yeah, I understand. Okay. I think everyone's, everyone's getting a message, yeah. That is, but that is like, in terms of YouTube, that seems to be one of the main things is like uh, making a response to someone's video or making a video, like, well, I don't know what you call them, just response videos. Like everyone makes these videos responding to someone or attacking someone. Um, it wor obviously, it works because she's, as you're saying, she's got a lot of views from that, but you don't seem to have ever done that. Maybe I'm wrong. I, don't I think have never made a response video to a person ever. I've never used somebody else's names in my title unless I was doing a positive collab, like an interview with them. I mean, I've just never bashed anybody on my channel. It's not my style. And I believe in karma. So I like, I never would do that, right? <laughs> I was like, that would come back to bite me. And you wouldn't believe though the amount of people who lie. Like, and I'm just so over it. The people who lie to say that somebody's like something and then they're not. And it's just... <sighs> I, I literally, it drives me nuts, but at, at the same time, it's like, I, the things that I choose to stand for, like integrity, authenticity, and love, and faith, none of those core values are present in creating a bash video about somebody, which I've had plenty created about me from people who don't even know me, right? It's like they've never even had a real conversation, so it's like, I understand the deeper part of it. Either it comes from, you know, a jealousy or from wherever they're at in their life, they're unhappy or, um, you know, they just have some issues. They want to make more money on YouTube. They want more fame, popularity, whatever it may be. But I've been in the game long enough and I've been doing this long enough to know what that looks like. And um, not to say that it hurts any less anytime I see it, but it's a lot less shocking. And I just kind of like, oh, they joined that wolf pack. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I see it now for what it is. We're going to move on and keep spreading light and love with the world. And, like, I know that I usually don't do responses to that, but I can be an opposing force and show the opposite of it and show what actually is beautiful and light and loving. And sorry for all the background birdies. Like, I don't know, baby, what is this? Oh, she's cleaning the carpet. <laughs> you guys just don't know what's happening right now. Baby, what is this? Oh, no, she's going to go water the plants now. Sorry, I've got my mom, like, helping today with things, and then my dad yelling. It's, like, so much family. It's, like, I'm Lebanese people. I can't help it. This is my life. Continue on, Ronnie. <laughs> okay, cool. Well, well, we'll get into some questions. And there's, the, the questions are totally random, different things that have come up so far. Sure. Um, let me see. Right, so the first question is about Candida. Oh my gosh, I've been getting that question a lot lately. Let's talk about it. I would like to know your opinion about candida and eating a big amount of fruit. I read a lot about this subject. Um, she's getting more and more confused. Um, she says she's still suff suffering with candida overgrowth. And uh, that I think she's saying that she gave up eating fruit for a week doing just veggie smoothies 
mostly and the weak and the pain in the stomach stopped. Uh, so she's saying that fruit helped, it gave it, she stopped eating fruit and she says this helped her candida at that time. So what do you I think, think that that for candida, there's usually two ways to go, right? Um, you can either go all fruits and no fat and basically just do mono mailing for a certain period of time, or you can do no fruit and a lot of greens and high fat. <laughs> It's one or the other. You cannot mix the two or your candida will flare. Now, I know Dr. Graham says that candida is caused because of a high volume of fat, right? Like that's in, uh, just like traveling throughout your bloodstream. Yeah. Um, and that anytime you eat sugar, basically it gets blocked and your sugar spikes. And it's not necessarily the sugar, it's the fat that's the issue. Um, but from what I have seen with people, you can go both ways with it. And... Um, Oh my god, I've even had I've even seen people consume turpentine to try and get rid of it. Yes. I yes. will say this though. Uh, <laughs> I actually know some people who've used essential oils to get rid of candida, like putting a drop of it in their water every few days, like the purify oil, and there's some that are really good for candida, like using essential oils. Topical creams don't help at all because it's an internal issue. Um, I would say that if you're gonna do fruit, you have to basically mono meal on one thing for 30 days. Like that's basically the one thing you're going to do because it just eliminates all other factors of you messing up. Um, the other thing is if you're going to go the other route, just to keep it not as high fat, what you could do is I say green juice all throughout the day and big salads at night with just a little fat if you can, right? Mm. Like an avocado, maybe a dressing, but to really get in a ton of greens and to make sure that you're getting in a lot of green juice. But the, the problem is, is, Ronnie, as you know, if you're going to end up going that route of not consuming any fruit, you're not going to get any calories, and eventually <laughs> you're not going to feel good, <laughs> and your energy is just going to go down like this. So um, I think that there are, those are the two ways that I've seen people get help with. Uh, Ronnie, what do you think? I worry about... See, when I hear people talk about candida and stuff, the first thing I want to ask them is, like, has it been diagnosed? Because I think a lot of people think they have issues that, that maybe they don't have sometimes. And I think that candida is something that people get told they have. And I think sometimes there's people like naturopaths or herbalists or whatever, and they'll tell people about candida. And so I worry that there's a, there's a lot of that going on where people believe they have candida. Um, well, I mean, there's definitely an issue of self-diagnosis happening everywhere nowadays, right? Like, and think about it. I mean, people are like, oh my God, I'm vitamin E deficient. And then they, yeah. <laughs> they go to Whole Foods and they buy all this vitamin E and they junk themselves up on vitamin E. But I, I stress this all the time and I cannot stress this enough. If you're not sure, just go get a blood test. Right, you can get blood tests done almost anywhere nowadays, and just to like and get a candida test done. Right, just figure out what you do have, and figure out where you where you need to kind of like pick up the pieces a little bit. And um, I mean, this is not about ego. This is about being smart and achieving a level of health that way you can continuously <clears throat> level up. And raw food only enhances that experience for you, and it only facilitates the healing even more. So I really do like to tell people this is just about you getting healthy and being smart and continuing to level up, right? And and to yes. be smart with that. So, yeah, that's yeah. I, I think it's a very it's a very um, important message for everyone to understand that that the the raw vegan this community or the, the people that are trying to be leaders in this community, like Christina. <clears throat> we're not, she's not saying, or we're not saying, don't go to the doctor, just eat fruit. You know, that is not the message of, of what we're trying to say. That we, the, the amazing thing is what we realize is that there, there are so many health issues that can be solved with a raw vegan diet, <clears throat> but there are others that can't or that uh, need extra help from yeah. like medical help. So um, be clear and make sure that you don't diagnose yourself. And when Christina was mentioning turpentine, um, there was a, I don't want to go into this story too much, but there was someone that I knew a few years ago that they went really wild on self-diagnosing themselves with every 
problem under the sun and um, they started doing things like turpentine and 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 this is the thing in the raw vegan movement is people start to think they've got parasites and they think they've got worms inside them and they think they've got things coming out of them and it just it, it's all kind of like a bit of a mental not mental I don't want to say mental health issue but it is a little bit on the borderline of that where some people just get uh, start believing things that maybe aren't real so it's important if you're going to say that it, with candida like is it so is it real by the way uh, someone was asking what is candida um do you, you want to take it or should i <laughs> well, my my understanding of it is candida is a parasite that is within us all the time and it eats sugar in your bloodstream so if you have an excess of sugar then candida is part of the process of consuming that and that the problem that people have is an overgrowth of candida where as you're saying because of the fat in the bloodstream, the sugar spikes, and then the candida is, you know, is, is a symptom of that rather than it being like an actual um, damaging thing. It's a good thing, but just not in too much quantity. Is that is that right? Yes, I would say that's definitely right. And you know, my sister had probably one of the worst cases of candida that I've ever seen in my whole life. Like, I mean, she had fungus growing on her breasts and all different kinds of weird things going on <laughs> with her. And um, I'll tell you what did work for her. She did a, she went on a banana island, basically, mono-mealed bananas for 30 days. And she saw maybe the candida decrease by half. I would say, right. and it helped her significantly. Yeah, um, and and that was like the best decision she ever made. Um, and then what ended up happening is she got she was like, oh, cool, it's great. And then you know she got back into eating more fats and more other things, and the candida came back. And <laughs> she ended up. I mean, she's not me, but she ended up succumbing to doing antibiotics, and it went away forever, right? But then it's like we put her on a juice cleanse after that to kind of like counterbalance the effect of that antibiotic and um it just makes me sad because i'm like okay i think i don't know how long it takes to completely get rid of candida but i know it takes a little bit of time right and it does take consistency and it does take dedication but the problem is is getting somebody to be super dedicated and consistent with something is really hard <laughs> most people are not consistent with something past a few days because they just forget and if it's not easy and convenient to them it's not a part of their lifestyle, right? Yeah. They're going to do whatever is right there for them. So um, I was really proud of her for doing 30 days on bananas. Like, it's not easy to do for a normal person who's like, doesn't have uh, a reason to go raw vegan, right? Like, she wasn't like me where she was diabetic and like, I needed to do that to save my life. For her, this was just like, okay, I'm going to do it because my little sister loves this and I'm going to do this for her. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I, I think it's harder for people who feel like they don't have a reason but at the same time, it's still so important. And um, yeah, she, she's doing really good now. She like does green juice every morning. She doesn't have candy anymore. Um, you know, but I, I would say just to, to be consistent and be dedicated to something and just to kind of watch these changes happen because they are, they're beautiful, you know? Yeah, that's brilliant. So uh, I think that's enough on Candida and you know so many people ask questions on it hopefully that's i love you ronnie i love you so much <laughs> you're just like yeah i think that's enough on candida <laughs> uh yeah um so i'm just gonna check I, I, i'm having like a few things i need to look at at the same time so i'm getting overwhelmed go for it I'm okay i'm reading okay. by the way i just want to say ronnie while you're doing that i'm reading everybody's comments and i just want to say hi to raquel voltfan linda kira has been like loving this conversation <laughs> uh graham we've got lynn uh we've got rhonda and let's see, yeah, uh, Gautam, Tejas, awesome. Just want to say hi to everybody who is here and just leaving a lot of love in the comments section. You guys are amazing. I see them all. We're reading. I'm reading through all of them right now. Excellent, so. excellent. There's quite a few people here here who were there last year and some that are coming this year. So that's 
Yeah, just um, if you guys could answer in the chat box, who's coming to the festival this year? And if you're coming, what is something that you would like to see me or Ronnie do different at the festival this year that would bring something more fun and to have value? Oh, hi, Serene. Serene just joined in on the comment section too. Yeah, and that would be cool to get people to see. Excellent, excellent. Okay, um, while we're waiting for those comments to roll in, the quite for uh, weight loss tips some people are interested in that so what i find interesting is when i look on forums and things you get some people that say i started eating fruit or i went raw vegan and i'm putting on all this weight and I, you know they're embarrassed that they put on all this weight and everything and then other people say they're going raw vegan and they can't they can't they're losing too much weight you know so it seems like there's both sides of the coin there so <clears throat> in terms of maybe even just sustaining your weight as a raw vegan and then if you want to lose weight and why would some people maybe gain weight? I got this. I got this, Ronnie. <laughs> I got this. You're ready. So I just want to say this. Uh, I have been, well, first off, Serene asked about my menstrual cycle or somebody, you know, Raquel asked about my menstrual cycle. Raquel, just Google fully raw and moon in YouTube and it'll come up. Okay. Um, so I'll just say this about the weight question. I have been both spectrums. I have been emaciatingly thin, and I've also been to the point where people were saying that I looked fat on a raw vegan diet. I've been both yeah. spectrums. I don't think I've ever been fat, uh, fat, right? But of mm. course, there were a lot of YouTube videos that came out at one point, people saying that I was just looked fat. And I addressed it publicly. Um, but you know, when I first got into this lifestyle, I was really sick, uh, type two diabetes, hyperglycemia, and I was emaciated from having been sick. And, uh, I was scared going raw vegan cause I was like, okay, well, I mean, I'm just going to lose more weight and I'm just going to dissipate into thin air. I'm <laughs> never going to be the same person again. And then, you know, once I learned a little bit more about this lifestyle, I realized it's just as easy to lose weight as it is to gain. Like you can actually gain weight easily on this lifestyle if you wanted to as well. It's pretty easy just to up the fat, <laughs> up the fruit, eat them at the same time. Boom. <laughs> Welcome weight. <laughs> Welcome weight. Um, but I would say this, finding a balance is probably the most important thing you can do for yourself. And something that tends to just work for me now is like, I love doing a juice in the morning or fruit. I love a smoothie in the afternoon, like bananas, cherries, and coconut water or something, and then a huge salad for dinner. That's been something that's worked really well for me. And something else that's been great for me just to tone my body has been not just sticking to one exercise, but really mixing it up. Mm. Like I only used to run maybe for 10 years straight, all I did was run. And now I do yoga, I do Pilates, I do boxing. I love doing all kinds of classes. I'll just like, I love the community of them. I'll just go jump in on any random exercise class that's being offered um, in the area. And when I can, I'll run. Um, and also, I just, I try and mix it up and have fun. Um, I'm also cautious not to overeat, but then at any given moment that I do find that there's a raw vegan restaurant, like I don't mind indulging as well. And I find that it's all about balance, right? So, um, yeah, but I would say for the most part, like I'm, I'm probably like not 80, 10, 10. I'm more like 95, 5. Right, like oh, really? the, the, the majority of my day at the moment is fruit, big salads at night, and then maybe adding in one or two avocados would be that 5%. But because I'm eating so much volume during the day and so many calories, that fat percentage is smaller. Mm. Um, I, don't, I don't know what you're at now, but I mean, this past year, my, flat, my fat consumption has fluctuated just depending on what country I'm in and what's easier to find. But um, yeah, I've... I would say that um, if you want to lose weight on this diet, it's there for you. If you want to gain weight, it's there for you. Both are possible. And um, it's just a matter of, number one, how much fruit and fat you're eating. And number two, uh, how your exercise is being incorporated, how often you're eating, and like not overeating as well. So uh, I yeah. hope that makes sense. Does that kind of answer the question? Yeah, for, for sure, for sure. When I go to when I go to festivals and events and I see someone that's like super super skinny, like a really super skinny person, I think that's someone that's really like a fruitarian. You know, that's why I think that they're they're really they're probably starting off and they're maybe under eating, but they're really um, 
they're really sticking to raw, right? That's what I can think when I see someone that's super skinny. Uh, but but so not necessarily because like there have been times where I've over ate fruit so much and I did put on weight, right? It, it, it really yeah. just depends on how many calories you're eating. Yeah, you know? so this is, so as, see, I kind of didn't believe that at one time for sure because when I started off, I was just eating fruit most of the time and I lost, I lost a lot of weight. And then I started But, but, but that was in the stuff. beginning, right? Yes. You yes. weren't eating all this other stuff and your body just like yes. adjusted. It was the honeymoon phase. Okay, keep going. Yeah, so I ended up eating more nuts and seeds. Well, basically more nuts. I, I ended up doing that and put on weight and then had tahini and stuff and put on weight and all that stuff. So, uh, and, and yeah, it was a combination of eating a lot of fruit and a lot of fat at the same time. But in my imagination, I thought as long as soon as I get back to eating just fruit, I will lose all the weight again easily and get down to my like the best weight. And um, so I got back to like all I was eating. All, the only fat I was having was avocado, like maybe one or two a day. And I was losing weight, but I thought, but quite really slowly. And I thought if I go down to no fats at all, just fruit and like lettuce and stuff. I will, I will, the weight will collapse off like it did when I first started on this diet. And so I, I gave up avocados as well, just as an experiment. And I was just basically eating fruit. And I, I've been kind of doing that for about two months, three months, just just fruit and, and lettuce really. I'm eating a lot of tomatoes. So a lot of my fruit is like low calorie fruit, like tomatoes. Mm -hmm. And my weight has stayed pretty constant. I'm pretty surprised by that. So it's like either I'm eating more or I've adapted somehow or I'm getting more from the fruit. So I'm quite pleased with that in a way. Like like you, you can really sustain your weight with just fruit and no fat. It's, it's really interesting to me. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think it's because initially when you first start giving up these things and then your body really learns how to, to kind of balance out after that, right? Yeah. Like you've been doing this a, a, a long time, kind of like me. We've been, my body knows exactly what to do with raw food now. It's like, <laughs> okay, I see you. I know what you're doing now. Like my body just knows. <laughs> it even knows what kind of a day I'm having. <laughs> my body no longer allows me to eat when I'm stressed or when I'm oh, wow. emotionally distraught about something. Like my food won't, like my body's just like, it won't let me, you oh, know? Wow. It's yeah. amazing. Your body is so intelligent. Mm. your body is intelligent and it's i this thought is crazy to me that so many people live in their body and they don't know their body you're like how do you not know what your body is trying to tell you you've been living in it your whole life right but then we experience that too right and it's it's just such an interesting relationship and dynamic of living in our body and learning to give it mm. what it needs and also to not abuse it and to love it and just to be patient and kind and compassionate with it, right? Brilliant. I think it's, it's interesting, you know, do you know what's so funny is, I feel like, I, I, I'm not saying I'm separate to my body, but I think a lot of people feel like, this is my body, I can do with it what I want, you know? And I kind of feel like I'm in a relationship with my body and I, uh, I don't just want to abuse it, <laughs> you know, like, like it's got, I don't know why I feel like this, like, like it's got its own stress, or something. I don't know how, how I'm trying to, I'm trying to say this in some way, but I feel like I don't want to, the, the body does so much for you that I don't, I want to respect it, that's how I feel, I guess, and um, I don't see it as being, it is, I, I don't know how I would put this, but like it's, it is me, but it's also almost a separate thing to me in a weird way. I don't know why, what that means, but anyway. <laughs> um, no, but it's true. Yeah. It's so true. Do you think that it can take, that people kind of don't give the, the diet long enough and that it can kind of take years for a person to fully adapt to the diet or get back to, or for the body to heal properly and do you I think, think a, wait wait rephrase that question for me one more time i guess what i'm saying is do you think that i've heard people say you really start getting the benefits of a raw diet five or seven years into it and no, that, absolutely not i when i first started going raw i felt the benefits within 
three days. Mm -hmm. It was like, but then again, I had really severe symptoms. I couldn't walk without, um, I couldn't walk without feeling faint. I was extremely underweight. My blood sugar levels were high and low. I had migraines. I was nauseous, vomiting. Like I was dealing with a lot at the time. And within three days, I started to feel just like a relief mm -hmm. from all of that pain. And I, I think people don't realize when you have physical pain, it hinders you from doing anything else. Like when you have real physical pain, you cannot do anything else. You cannot live your life. You are, you are, you're not an asset to the world at that yeah. point. And um, I think most people, if they don't have that kind of pain, they don't really have an impetus to create change. They have no motivation to do it. It's like, oh, I'll eat healthy when I get sick. I don't have a reason to right now. <laughs> like, why would you wait until you get sick? Right at yeah. that point, it's usually too late. Yeah. Like, but then there's some people like me who are actually lucky enough to discover something like raw food in the meantime and change their life in like when it's at the time that you need to do it. So, um, yeah, that's that's my take on it. It's <laughs> my take. That's a good take. Um, so there's loads of questions coming in now, and some people are asking about staying consistent with. 100% raw and kind of how do you motivate yourself to stay raw and how do you how do how does someone make that jump so i would say i mean i've been 100% fully raw for 13 and a half years it'll be 14 years july 15th for me and i am one of the very weird random people that went raw in one night and never went back like, I just never wanted to go back. I didn't want to go back to my old life. I didn't want to go back to what it felt like to be sick. And any time that I even ever had a craving, I don't anymore, but even then, any time I had one, I just remembered the pain that I felt and what it felt like to be in my old skin. And I immediately just have this cringe reaction. I'm like, nope, I'm not going back to that ever. I'm not ever going back to that. And that's always been my motivation. Mm. But the thing is, for people who don't, have maybe something like that or don't have the inspiration they're like well i want to do this but like it's so hard right like there's so many excuses <laughs> just so hard <laughs> um especially when it becomes inconvenient and you can't necessarily like drive around the, the corner to a juice shop or you can't make your own juice or you don't have your own juice or your own blender you don't have access to good produce you can't afford the produce you can come up with all types of excuses right um the thing that has helped me the most and this sounds so simple is when I was getting started and John Rose was like my best friend at the time, helping me really coach through this. Every night before I went to sleep, I had a food journal. Mm -hmm. And I would write down what I ate that day, what I plan to eat the next day, what I have in my fridge, how many times I went poop, what my poop looked like, <laughs> I weighed out my calories. I wanted to know everything. Because at that point, it was like, I didn't understand why I was feeling better just eating fruits and vegetables. It went against everything my family, my friends, doctors had ever told me. Wow. And yet everything that they had told me was making me physically ill. And yet here I am doing this crazy thing of only eating fruits and vegetables, this crazy thing. And it was like, <laughs> I'm feeling better. And in my heart, I know that this is right. And I, I literally let go of almost every relationship that I had at the time because for me, I discovered what health felt like for the first time in my life. And I couldn't understand why they wanted me to go back and be sick and do things their way when my way, I felt like I was just breaking out of the shell wow. that I had been wanting to break out of my whole life. And um, I would say this, the, the, the number one thing you can do to be consistent is plan. And it can just be as easy as having a little food journal and writing things down on the daily of how you want to get this done. But if you know where your resources are coming from, if you know how to afford them, and if you can plan out the time to make these recipes, and every day is going to be different, remember, because nobody's one day is the same. You're going to have dinner with your mother the other night. You're going to have somebody here tonight. It's like everybody's schedules are different. If you can just plan out those things and just like secure them in, even when you're traveling to just do a little bit of research on where you can find food, you're set. Last yeah. year, Ronnie, I was in 19 countries last year, 20 if you doubled it, Bali. I never had one issue eating fully raw yeah. in all 19 of those countries. I'm not even talking about cities. I'm talking about countries. And actually, it was easier to eat raw 
outside of the United States than it was to eat raw inside the United States. <laughs> and, um, and it was so fun too, because I got to try new and exciting foods and things that were in season in other places and exotic fruits that were not available in the United States. And I just think it's fun. And, and the it thing is, is if, if I would have had any excuse in my head, I would have easily gone back to eating something else, yeah. but I've, I've made a commitment to myself. Yeah. Right. And I no longer eat raw just to uphold like an image or to say, oh, I've made a commitment to do whatever, like not in that way, but I made a commitment to my health and I love the way this makes me feel. And I genuinely love this and this lifestyle and everything that it stands for. And I understand that I'm an advocate for it. And so I hold myself to that. Right. Because it's like, because ethically I do believe in this so much. I don't even think about something else. I'm so happy physically with my health and what I what I do right now like there's just no I'm not thinking about anything else at this moment you know yeah absolutely so, and um I know there's so many people right now who've just kind of left the lifestyle they're doing something totally different and it's like okay I don't judge them I have compassion everybody's on their own path but like I just know for me people are never going to have to worry about that coming from me because I'm so committed to this lifestyle and I I just love it Right. Yeah. And it's like, I want to be that example for people. I want to be that person where people can say like, you know what? Christine is an example. I've seen her do it for this long. She's living as an inspiration for us done. You know, I don't want people one day to be like, Oh, well, KB finally caved in and like, <laughs> did it, you know, she finally went under. Yeah. We're waiting for it. Like I can't wait to prove everybody wrong. Cause that's just not going to happen with me. Yeah, I mean, I've I've seen some of my some of the heroes that I had, you know, when I was starting off, and the people that that I was following, and that made me go to the Woodstock Fruit Festival, and you know, made me do all this stuff. And a lot of them are, a lot, most of them are still vegan, but they've they've moved away from from raw. And I think the why, thing why do you think that is? Why do you think that is? Honestly. Um. I, I just think it's the same with everything. I think it's like they they weren't surrounded with enough people that were doing the same thing and there were temptations around and maybe for some of them it was, I think a lot of people are making a mistake where they think they can reach out to more people if they broaden what they're doing. Um, but for those people, they were never doing it for the right reason to begin with. Okay. Right, in my in my mind, for anybody who does this to gain more popularity or status or to look mm. more popular, it's like, of course, you're not going to stick with it. You were never yeah. doing it for yourself. Right, right, right. Right? Like, oh, if you're going to if you're gonna make a sacrifice to your body and go vegan to eat a bunch of beans and rice and pastas and vegan junk food to save the animals, I mean, okay, one thing, but at the same time, you're kind of also sacrificing your health to, quote, quote, reach more people. You can still reach as many people. Yeah. promoting the same message you don't have to go sacrifice that or go overboard that's just a personal choice yeah yeah and um there's, there's a lot of people now there's a lot of people as well that are now they're moving away from the vegan diet because they're saying that the vegan diet is and it's almost always digestive problems people having digestive conditions and See, um, I've never discovered that either because, I mean, number one, most people are not used to consuming a rich, fiber-filled diet. Mm -hmm. People are used to eating dead food, sludgy food that your system doesn't have to do a lot of work to process. <laughs> and most people aren't used to pooping three to four times a day either. So when people come to the table and they're like, oh, I have digestive issues, I'm like, okay, do you actually have a digestive issue like Crohn's or colitis? <laughs> or are you just having a lot of bad gas and is it just uncomfortable because you're eating fiber right now? And how long have you been doing it? They're like, oh, I've been doing it like two weeks, a month. I'm like, not enough time for your body to learn how to adjust this. Study right. food combining, like go get a few colon hydrotherapies, go get a colonic, uh, like get used to pooping. And instead of like complaining about how much you poop, why don't you start celebrating it? Because your body's releasing some serious toxins right now that like maybe you've been carrying around for years. So 
It's like, I'm not going to diagnose anybody, but I, I'm always going to say, go get tested, go get your blood checked. If you think you have a digestive issue, don't just say you have one, actually go get tested. And if you come back and you do have Crohn's disease or a tear in your colon, mm -hmm. colon lining, then we'll go from there and we'll give you the right things to eat. But I mean, obviously when you eat a rich fiber filled diet, you're going to have some digestive discomfort because you're not used to eating that much roughage, right? Mm. I mean, you may be not on the same page with me here, but this is just something that well, I've I, been going through right now. Yeah, I get it. I mean, I, I, in terms of those people that were the, they were kind of leaders in doing this, I, I just think that, I just think they fell into temptation and, you know, I, I don't think it was a big, I, th I think some people as well, they, the, the, the honeymoon period wears off where they're no longer feeling this, uh, this amazing whatever it is that people feel at the beginning like a high or this incredible change they forget what that was like and they get used to now this new sense of health they get so used to it that they kind of uh, take it for granted a little bit and then they start letting and eventually temptation maybe slips in but um, you know, let's not whatever. forget as well. Let's not forget as well that emotional health plays a huge role in this as well. Yes. Right. Like, I mean, and by emotional health, I mean like people passing away and you being traumatized by it. Things that are yeah. happening in your life that may cause depression. Um, just emotions can also affect your health. The mental and the physical are connected, right? And we can be easily swayed and convinced by things as well. And um, yeah, I just, I just want to make sure people know that like the emotional is such a huge component into this as well. It's not just always uh, the physical, right? So. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, th that is the other thing, like when people have problems and they're not feeling good and they're not, don't have any energy and like, I'm doing this lifestyle, I don't have any energy. It's like, well, there's so many ass things in your life. Like, are you getting enough sleep? Are you stressed? A lot of people don't even realize they're stressed. Um, so there's a lot, there's a lot of things to it, but something you said that about this lifestyle is that it's fun and that's how I feel about it. I, and, and you also said that you love it and that's why I want to keep doing it. I, I think it is so fun. I do genuinely love it. I, I think it's a, I think it's a great expression of who you are. It's like, this is so to me it's almost like funny like i'm just eating fruit and just eating fruit and vegetables and stuff like it's just such a funny thing it's an unusual thing but it should be so normal and uh, going to a new place and going to a new shop and looking through the the fruit and looking at the veg like that's fun and looking at all the different types and the change all the time because it's not just like people think, oh, you just get grapes, but there's hundreds of different varieties and they come from different parts of the world. And when you start looking into all this thing, to me, that is, that is fun to me. <laughs> but I, um, hey, There's nothing more fun to me than when somebody brings home a big ripe jackfruit and we get to sit there for an hour and pot it <laughs> and just like jam to music and open a jackfruit. It's become my new favorite pastime. Yeah, so. right. That, uh, that jackfruit party. But... Do you like, are you a fan of durian? Do you even know me, Ronnie? <laughs> I can't believe you just asked me that question. <laughs> Do I even like durian? You know, I'll tell you a funny story. My birthday, maybe like seven, eight years ago, it was after co-op one mm -hmm. night and it was my birthday and I got a bunch of my volunteers and close friends at the time uh, we went to the Asian market here and we bought like seven cases of durian, right? And there was only maybe like seven or eight people who came over, <laughs> right? <laughs> and I think two or three of these people did not like it. They were like, oh my God, the smell, they couldn't handle it. So then there were seven or eight cases of durian just for me and two or three other people. <laughs> I ended up eating six full durians that night. Like keep in what? mind each durian is like 2000 calories, right? 1600 calories. Oh my God. I got so sick. I was throwing up the whole next day. So I guess you could say <laughs> I really like durian. I went a little overboard that night. Like some people get drunk on alcohol. I got super drunk on durian. Like if that's even possible. <laughs> yeah. Well, what I love, what I love about that story, it's kind of like the lady that made the video about you and said the portion sizes. 
and, <laughs> you know, that's I kind of love this message of, you know, you can eat as much as your heart desires, really like that. You know. Please, but the fact that she goes, I roll, Christina, those portion sizes, I'm like, so you, she goes, oh, I said, you know, and she's like, oh, you're not promoting a diet. I was like, uh, I never said that I promote a lifestyle and I am not about restriction based lifestyles or diets. I was like, but if you want to tell people to eat less, go ahead, tell them to starve, you know, <laughs> like not here to do that to anybody. Right. Like, and it, we're talking about lettuce here. Right. So it's yeah, like if right. people were educated, they know one head of romaine is only 75 calories. You could mm -hmm. eat three heads of romaine and not even reach 500 calories. Right. Yeah. yeah. And it's, um, it's just interesting to see people's takes on these things. Oh, so what do you think? Fun. So oh. <laughs> two other questions coming up. Some people have asked about fasting and dry fasting and things Oh yeah. Like I mean, I've done a nine day water fast. And I've done a 42-day long juice cleanse before, juice fasting. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've loved both. Uh, juice cleansing was perfect for me to, you know, reset physically. And I do it when I'm traveling. Juice cleansing is amazing. Actually, it's helped me quite a bit. Um, and then when I want to do something deeper and more emotional uh, for some emotional healing, I, I do water fasting. But um, I, I've done a lot of smaller juice cleanses. Like, and I think at one point in time for like a whole year, every Monday I did a juice cleanse just because I wanted to see what it was like to do one juice cleanse like mm -hmm. a week just for a day. And my body responded really well to it. I actually loved it. And um, I did it every, I did it on a co-op day because my days were so high stress, high intensity, didn't have time to eat and just having a juice there and drinking juice. I can't tell you the amount of stress that it took away from my body. And it gave me more energy to deal with the heavy thing I was managing at the time. So, um, yeah, I, I think they're great, but I think they also need to be done within context and, you know, responsibly, for sure. Hmm. And another question. Have you, have you got any opinion on dry fasting? Have you, you... I've never done dry fasting. Yeah, I, I think it's a very... It can be quite a dangerous thing. It's, it's not something I... Yeah. I mean, we, I mean, us as raw vegans, right. We're always eating a lot of fruit. We're also eating a lot of like a lot within that fruit is a lot of, um, water. Mm. So we're always well hydrated. I, I don't think it, I don't know how I feel about dry fasting. I won't comment on that. I do, you, haven't done it myself. do you drink a lot of water? Separate no. to, right. No, I eat a lot of fruit and I get so full from fruit that I don't, I will say this. Um, the past year, I've kind of gotten really into drinking some kombucha. Like, I'll drink it for fun. And I drink yeah. so much juice as well. Um, that's basically it. And the only other kind of water that I'll ever drink is maybe, like, a sparkling water. And sometimes in the evenings, if I ever have, like, a upset stomach, like, sparkling water with, uh, like, some lemon squeezed in it sometimes helps me. Mm. That's it, you know? And what are your thoughts on this uh, person's bit questionable raw foods such as protein powders, apple cider vinegar, uh, green powders, things like that? So, I mean, obviously people say some of them are questionable, but if they're dehydrated and they're still preserve the nutrients, I think for people who are in transition, these things are really helpful, right? Because you can't expect somebody who's going from like, standard American diet to this to just go to all fruits sometimes it's hard for them but incorporating some things like a spirulina or some gourmet foods that have some of these items in it I I don't mind them obviously like I I like the Sun Warrior protein powder they're the only company that I know of that is consciously a raw vegan protein powder mm -hmm. um, so I, I mean I don't poo poo it I don't mind it. I actually think that the flavor is nice, like for people, guys especially, who think they come into this lifestyle and they have to have protein. It's like, okay, cool. This is for you, right? Like, problem solved. We don't need to talk about this anymore. Eat your greens, do your powder, never have to address this again, right? Um, spirulina can be a cool thing to add. What else did they mention? I don't know. I mean, but here's the thing about it. 
it's never the core of my diet. These are just little trinkets that are added in mm -hmm. to make it a little bit more interesting, especially for people who are transitioning. It makes things just a bit more interesting and enjoyable for people who are trying to transition. Excellent. Give me a second. Sorry. Uh, someone said, I, I enjoyed your video on fruit trees. So glad to see you growing. Or is that what you said? Yeah, I have uh, 14 fruit trees in my backyard. Did you oh, really? Have, yeah, well, when I, when I had my co-op, I had way more. I had a whole full-fledged garden. I had tomatoes and bell peppers and cucumbers and cantaloupes, watermelons. I even had a mango tree at one point that was actually growing mangoes. Um, but ever since I closed my co-op and I've been traveling the past two years, um, my plants have taken a turn, especially after Hurricane Harvey, everything got drowned out. But my fruit trees remain. I have two grapefruit trees. I have three orange trees. I have two avocado trees. Uh, I have three date palms. And um, I have a lemon tree, a Meyer lemon tree, and... Yeah, I have. I basically have a bunch of citrus trees and and things like that. So, but uh, if y'all were watching my Instagram stories, maybe like a week ago, I went outside and I picked my grapefruit tree. I'll show you. One. Ah, all right, okay. Yeah, here I have some right here. Yeah, I, I got like I got a whole like oh, wow. bags of these. Like I maybe pull like 150 of these. Like nice sized Texas grapefruits. They're ruby red on the inside, and we'll do eat them or make juice. Um, so, oh, and I have three papaya trees. Oh wow, yeah. really? Yeah. In Texas. Yeah. Well, I mean, oh, wow. it is subtropical. Right. Okay. Like we're because we're right by Mexico, you know, so we right. have really right. warm weather here, and it doesn't snow where I'm at ever, and. Um, like the coldest it ever gets is right now it's, you know, it's in the sixties during the day, but like fifties at night. Excellent. Yeah. I can't, I can barely do below 80. I struggle. <laughs> I struggle. <laughs> <laughs> so someone's saying, um, I, people can constantly go against you when you're trying to be raw vegan. I find it a battle, even with my friends. How do you deal with this? Thank goodness for your YouTube presence. Keep, it keeps me going. Big hugs. Thank you. Just, just keep in mind, um, for whoever said that, people will try to criticize you for the things that they believe that they can't do. Always. It is mm -hmm. always going to be that. And they're going to put you down because they doubt themselves and they're putting themselves down and they believe that they can never do it. But if we're putting it practically to present, what you're doing is just eating fruits and vegetables that's it, right? We're not like, logistically speaking, that argument is so silly, <laughs> right? Just be like, I just want to eat fruits and vegetables. Why are you upset about this right now? It actually has nothing to do with that. It mostly has to do with that person projecting onto you. Mm -hmm. And you should never absorb that. You should always just keep doing you. And please do not care what other people think. Do not live your life for somebody else. It will breed resentment. You will not be happy. Just keep living your life the way you want to live it. Absolutely. Thank you for thank you for that answer. Yeah. So you had quite. I mean, people might think that you had it easy or whatever, but you shared a lot of stuff at the UK festival last year that you know you didn't get maybe as much support from your family at first as some people might think. Oh yeah. Um, Who thought I had it easy? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, who thought that, really? Let's talk about it. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I definitely, I feel like I've just not, like, I had a, I had a hard run in, in my 20s. Number one, getting better. My mom didn't talk to me for four years. She did not support me at all in doing this lifestyle. My dad was supportive. My sister was supportive. But my mom, man, it was really rough. And um, I lost a lot of friends who just didn't understand what I was doing and they thought I had just gone off the deep end and like I said I knew in my heart that it was right because I was feeling better and nothing had ever made me feel this good so I continued with it and eventually I won everybody over no doubt about that now they're all like come to me for help and I'm like it's like one of those I told you so moments but I don't rub it in you know <laughs> um but I, I'd say this like I've, I've definitely been through my fair share of 
public harassment, people making fun of me, judging me, criticizing me, um, you know, everything that happened after Woodstock. It was just, uh, I think the word trauma is appropriate because it, it took me a really long time to get through some of that. And then, you know, a year and a half ago, closing my co-op was just like a breaking point for me. And um, yeah, it's losing my dog about a year and a half before that too, which is like, I still haven't really gotten over that. So I, the thing is, it's like, I don't think anybody has it easy. It, it, the thing, everybody has their own journey and it's mm. all relative. It really is. I mean, you may see all my stuff online and think, oh, wow, she has the perfect life. But I have worked so hard to get where I am. And like, I, I feel like I share my truth so authentically with people and I just want to help people. And for anybody who makes fun of me or who gives me hate online, there are far worse things I could be doing <laughs> than trying to get people to eat more fruits and vegetables. You know, I mean, there are far worse things I could be doing. And it, it blows my mind every time how... Um, when I tend to get persecuted for something, it usually comes from the vegan community or from people who are supposed to be helping me do this, right? And um, that's where I've always gotten a bit confused because I've always gotten more support from people who aren't vegan. And um, I've continued to call myself a vegan and associate myself with vegans because I believe in the message. But uh, I'll say this, like it's taught me so much on how to be strong. And it's taught me a lot about people and patterns of people, behaviors of people, it's matured me a lot. It's given me a lot of discernment. It's taught me how to continue to follow my heart no matter what people say or think or do or um, about me. And um, it's helped me really to, to have a drama-free life right now and to be just stronger. Mm -hmm. So um, ultimately, all these things have, have worked in my favor. But um, at yeah. one point, was I naive? Absolutely. The world is not always there to make you, <laughs> to help you, and you have to learn some of these things on your own. Um, but I do like to believe that I've maintained a lot of my purity um, and, and that, I, um, that I still have my genuineness of heart and good intentions and authenticity in that. And I definitely still operate out of integrity. Um, always, that's just my number one right now, so. Yeah, I mean, the... There's a few things there that I wanted to go into. The, the first thing is, um, I think that people don't realise that, ve if you've been to a vegan event or a vegan festival or a vegan thing, there's a complete, almost a completely different atmosphere at a vegan festival to a raw vegan or a fruit festival. Like, it's a really different thing. And someone was talking to me and she said, um, she said she went to a vegan thing last year uh, and she said she was asking about the, the fruit festival and she said that there were so many people at the vegan event that were going around with t-shirts or with uh, clothing on that had like really negative messages on it like um, violence and you know all this kind of stuff that sometimes vegans can get a little bit uh, cool. Well, not, I mean, ethical vegans, right? Like, I mean, some people aren't vegan for the animals, some people are vegan for their health, but then I guess you could call them plant-based, but I usually find that uh, ethical vegans tend to have more of a extreme uh, abrasive approach like that, if you would say. Yeah, I mean, I would never personally wear like a skull and crossbones. I just don't like images <laughs> like that. But there's vegan, there's like uh, vegan organizations that have things like that as their logo, like really, and, and I think it, it's, uh, yeah, we don't really get that so much at the fruit festivals, but um, yeah, it is, it is funny. Every, everyone's a little bit, it's, the whole online thing is just, it really uh, creates a lot of this fake division kind of thing because no one's really like that in real life no one would make a response video to you in real life or whatever the, the thing yeah, would be yeah you know i do like i just say this you have to meet people with where you're at and you have to be compassionate because the word vegan does mean compassion and you just have to to go from there right but um obviously we all come from different places and different health and different journeys and stories and um you know, just to kind of be understanding with that is, is the most important thing, I think. 
Excellent. Now we got we got a few questions in that are sort of all kind of in the same area. So some are about menopause and some are about menstrual cycle, and uh, some people are curious about that. Yeah, uh, I actually have a whole twenty minute long YouTube video about this where I talk about it, and um, I actually lost my period for a long period of time when I first went raw. And, but it was because I'd never had it to begin with when I was sick. And uh, actually, when I went raw, I got it back and full force for a bit. And then it's kind of calmed down. But uh, the benefits of this are essentially that I don't have cramps. Um, and it's just, I see other women who are just like down and out the first day of their period. I can still fully function <laughs> on my first day of my period. And I, I do really, really well. And um, if anything, I've come to really appreciate my period. Like I actually view my blood as sacred and like the beautiful power of femininity and of being a woman. So, um, but yeah, I definitely still have it. Everything still functions normal. We're good over here. You don't, you're saying you don't have cramps? Uh, the only time I would ever get a cramp would be the first day. And if I wasn't like taking care of myself, like if I had eaten a bunch of fat the night before, maybe I would feel it. But I'm, I'll give you an example. Two months ago, we were driving to go see my brother in Dallas, and I was in the car with my mom and my dad and my sister. <laughs> and I started my period in the car, and I didn't even know it. <laughs> like, I didn't even know I started the period until after four hours of driving, I got up from the seat, and I was like, oh, I didn't even know that this was happening today. Okay. <laughs> like, I didn't even feel it coming. It just wasn't, you know, but I mean, there are some signs when you're a female that like, you know, your period's coming, right? Like your body just kind of adjusts in different ways, you know, like things get more sensitive. Um, so, you know, when it's coming sometimes, but I would say it's become a lot more comfortable for me being a raw vegan than if I were eating meat for sure. And have you got any advice on menopause? Obviously, it's not something you've experienced yet. But any... so I think it's menopause is very misunderstood. Menopause is when... A woman reaches a certain age and she no longer gets her period and it basically means she's no longer going to have children anymore. Um, and it doesn't have to be a bad experience, right? It just means you, you deal with some hormonal changes that happen in your body. And um, I know that going raw vegan definitely helps the transition and makes it way less uncomfortable for people. So, so uh, just... Uh, just a couple of last questions. Someone was asking, what's your thoughts on, there's a bit of a trend of people drinking celery juice. Mm -hmm. uh, I think, um, I don't know, do you have any thoughts on that? I think it might be... The I personally thing. don't believe that celery juice is any more beneficial than a green juice. It's, right. uh, it's a very clever tactic to get people to drink more green juice. You know, one ingredient, easy to find, but uh, personally it's not more beneficial than drinking a juice that has cilantro and cucumber and lemon and ginger in it. Um, mix it up, people. I'm just going to say this now, like mix it up. Raw food is just as good. And, and obviously people are going to feel benefits of doing celery juice because they're still probably replacing it with something else that they would have been eating. Mm. Um, so uh, yeah, I just, I don't believe that it's more beneficial than other green juices for sure. Great, great. And, uh, okay. Um, so, what I want to go into now is talk a little bit about the Fruit Festival and about going to events in general because I tend to think that most of the people that have managed to go raw vegan long term have either, like yourself, they met someone like John Rose, which is very unusual for someone to meet someone like John Rose because uh, there's not many people like him. So they met a mentor who showed them how to do it, or they went to an event and met other people, and sometimes a combination of both. Um, what's been your experience of different events, and how did it help you in uh, your journey of going raw vegan? Different events? Yeah, like retreats and festivals and whatever else. Um... I'm probably not the best person to ask about this because I feel like I was able to do more. Um, I feel like I was able to do more of this important work on my own than I was in these festivals. I actually 
-hmm. not talking about your festival, but me being honest, I feel like festivals only brought more drama and kind of uh, confusion to my journey. And um, (laughs) just being honest, I, I felt like I had more peace and more success just doing it on my own and having a small group of supportive people around me than I did. Uh, with a bunch of people trying to tear me down and create lies about me and uh, just trying to be my friends so that they could tear me apart later. So I didn't really have that great of uh, an experience with festivals before yours. Um, but I did, I did love Dr. Graham's Health and Fitness Week. Like, actually, I would say, but I don't consider his to be a festival. You know, I, I interned at his Health and Fitness Week for years, and, like, I couldn't wait to go back. I loved it. But I think it was because I loved being around Doug. And I loved being around the knowledge that he shared. And I loved being able to just meet a select group of people who ended up becoming my friends for a long time and just have people with a common interest. So yeah, yeah, I'm probably not the right person to ask about that, but that's my honest answer. (laughs) Well, that's, I mean, that's what I really meant, not just a festival, but just any kind of gathering where you're with other people that are doing the same thing. And uh, do you think Doug's a bit misunderstood? Do you think people don't really? Oh yeah. I mean, I've known Doug for 13 years now, and he has always been so kind and gracious and loving with me, like a father figure, and he's never led me astray. And I know a lot of people have had like a misconception, misperception of of him or, or things that have happened, but he's always been so good to me, and I owe a lot to him because he's helped me become physically healthier and has given me some really solid advice and he just gets it. And um, I mean, obviously I don't, I, I don't know much, but I'd say like us as humans, like everybody makes mistakes. Everybody has, you know, things that may not align with everybody else, but I, I do love Doug. And I think that he's done a, a great job of really trying to pioneer this movement. And I think some things that have happened to him have been super unfair. Um, yeah. And that's all I'll say on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, um, I want to talk a little bit about the festival then specifically. So uh, last year you were at the festival for the first time and I I thought what you did at the festival was amazing. Like all your talks, your interaction with everyone, you ran the women's circle and I couldn't, I couldn't, make any improvement on what you did and how you contributed to the festival and um, it just seemed like everything you were doing was whether it was or not it felt like you'd really thought about it in advance it felt like you you knew you totally knew what you were doing is what I, is what I kind of mean so thank you um, I'm not sure what to ask in relation to that, but what was your no, this has what, been how, great. This what was your what was your experience? Or how did you experience the festival last year? I loved it. I wouldn't change a thing. I mean, obviously, I'm coming back, and it's the only festival that I'm coming back to this year. So I think that says a lot. Um, like I said earlier, I loved it because everybody was sweet, and I felt like I really had permission to be myself <clears throat> in a judgment-free zone that was safe with people who were kind and had pure intentions and goodness of heart, and that meant so much to me. That meant so much to me. Yeah, you you, you mentioned a word there that I think is important, which is the word safe, and uh, that was, someone said that to me last year as well, something about feeling safe, about feeling supported, and I think people don't get that. Like we always have these fears or worries, and I don't know if it comes from childhood or whatever that that will be ridiculed or that will go into a situation in which we are not accepted or whatever. But um, I've I've never really felt that at any of these fruit festivals that I've been to, and I've never been like a major. I'm not a public figure really, so I don't get the same kind of attention that you get. But um, just as an attendee, I've always thought that the the, 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 the other people that turn up, um, it's always a really great group of people. In the, and at the UK festival, it's always been it's always been a really nice group of people. So uh, it's been such a nice group of people. Honestly, it's it's just a, a pure, kind-hearted group of, of people. It reminds me of what my journey was like when I first started doing this. 
It really does. And um, I think that's why I like it so much is that I see the purity of heart of people who really want to do this. Yeah. And the people who are there and I, I appreciate it so much. So, so if, just to give a little plug, if people are interested in coming to the festival, our early bird price is actually finished tonight in a couple of hours at 11 p.m. If you want to sign up for the lowest price and pay it over six or seven months or pay it in one go if you like, then uh, fruitfest.co.uk slash registration is the place to go and do that. And the discount code for 10% off, you can use, uh, let me think, you can use the code fully raw, that'll give you 10% off. And um, yeah, you can use that one. And anyone who came last year or has been previously, you can use the code fruity, F-R-U-I-T-Y, and that gets you a little bit more off because you've come previously. So you can use either of those codes. And uh, if you appreciate it if you sign up early. And if you're worried about the fact that you don't know what you're going to do, you don't know what you're doing in the summer, you might be away, something might happen, uh, there's a 100% refund policy. So you can get all your money back if you're not able to make it. So you shouldn't have any fears or concerns about signing up early. And uh, hopefully that helps you out if you want to come. And what's included in your ticket is your accommodation. We provide your full accommodation, or you can bring a tent if you like. Um, lunch, sorry, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, all raw vegan, and an evening meal that's prepared by, it's all prepared by a professional chef. And it's delicious. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and we have fitness classes in the morning of different types of fitness from really world class level trainers doing fitness class in the morning then we have lectures throughout the day we have workshops in the middle of the day we have entertainment each night and it's just a totally packed schedule you can see the we'll have a schedule up on the page pretty soon so we'd love to see you there and please let other people know as well bring your family bring your friends let them see that this isn't just a lifestyle for kind of crazy people or strange people or whatever and you get to hang out with me and ronnie <laughs> for sure so um, last few I don't want to take up too much of your time Christina but one last question to call. do you know anything in particular that helps rosacea and sensitive face skin mm. getting red you know what? And um, I would say this a clean colon gives you really clear beautiful skin a lot of green juice um, I actually do a lot of bathing uh, with a turmeric scrub that's helped me in the past. Um, also, I would say maybe some essential oils, coconut oil. I'm not a skin expert, but I do also know that like getting colonics helps as well. Uh, so I'll just give that advice before we, we take off. Yeah. Thank you very much for joining us, everyone, today. I'm really, really grateful that everyone uh, has turned up to watch and all the people on Facebook as well. And uh, yeah, just continue to follow the festival. Ask us any questions. If you've got, if you want another webinar like this, get in touch with us. Let us know what you want, and we hope to continue to serve um, this community of people and help gradually and slowly move the world towards a better uh, diet, better lifestyle for everyone, and more fruits and vegetables. And uh, it's getting there, we're getting there and the festival's growing every year. We have over 100 people already signed up and we're looking forward to meeting you and seeing you and for you to be part of it. So thanks everyone for watching. And Christina, just to finish off, what's your message of motivation and inspiration for everyone uh, to leave with for today? Live in your truth. If you want to feel alive, keep eating raw food, keep spreading love, light and a positive message and be the light for others to see. That's my message. Thank you very much. <laughs>